Working with multi-instruments, we can combine VST instruments, including third-party VSTs, note effects devices, as well as effects, all into one package that we can then play as a layered device or restrict the playback of the included instruments in our multi-instrument device to uh, specific key ranges on our keyboard. So let's just take a look at this in action and see how we can go about creating and configuring our multi-instruments uh, to perform how we'd like. Now we have a couple of different ways that we can go about creating our multi-instruments. And if I come to the instruments section here and bring in a Mai Tai, now we've got that on this instrument track. If I were to bring in a mojito and attempt to put that on the same track, then I'm going to get a dialogue here that asks if we want to replace, keep, or combine. And this is the first way that we can create a uh, multi-instrument. So maybe if you're working on a song and you've been using one synth and you want to make it a little bit fatter, then this is one method that you can use. I'm going to just hit replace and then remove that and shift T to remove that track. The second way that we can go about doing this is coming to the instruments tab. We're already here. And then at the very top, we have multi instruments. And in this first one here, new multi instrument is what we want to drag on to our arrange view. But before we do that, notice that there are some presets here and templates as well down at the bottom. So uh, depending on what sort of work you'd like to do, there's solo, split, sequence, layer, and then we can just click and see what else is contained within these folders that we may want to work with. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and select this new multi and drag that into our range view. I will F5 and close out the browser. And here we have our multi-instrument device. And to begin, we'll just get familiar with the different areas of the device before we start working with instruments in here. At the very top, we've got the typical typical controls. We've got power, bypass, an area for managing our presets, uh, loading our different patches, presets here as well. We have a direct input here. And this is basically, if we were to come to our instrument track and then say, select none for our MIDI input, then if I play my external keyboard, then you can see the virtual keys on our multi-instrument are not being triggered. This may also be because we don't have an instrument loaded, but if I were to then come to the direct input and choose my MPK Mini, then we can see that it's bypassing our instrument track and just taking that direct input from the external controller that we choose here. So that's what that's about. I'll just go ahead and put that back to none, come over to the instrument track, and I'll choose all inputs. We then have a area where we can choose our automation mode, our compare, copy, and paste. And then down at the left corner here, we can use these three icons to access the three main areas of our multi-instrument. And we have our macro controls. We then have an area for mapping those controls. And then we have our routing display. Now, if we'd like a larger area to work with, which I do for this tutorial, we can just come to a corner and then click and drag to expand this out. And we've seen that we can add a second VST instrument to a pre-existing instrument track that has an instrument on it. But if we're starting from scratch here, uh, blank slate, the way that we can uh, add our instruments in this instance is by coming to the instruments up top here, clicking on instruments, and then I will select a mojito. And then we can see that our mojito is represented in our routing matrix by this edit module. And then if I move this, we can see that the mojito is also behind our multi instrument as well. We also have a line coming down to our edit module, which basically signifies note and control data flow to this instrument. And if you notice that our new instrument within the multi instrument is assigned a default color here, and this is represented on the edit module, as well as our inspector and the key range area. But we can change that at any time by clicking here and accessing the color palette. We can also click down at the bottom. And I think maybe I will just change this to, say, this deeper red. Now, in our inspector area, we can, along with the color palette there, we can access power for our instrument, bypass uh, an area for working with uh, managing our presets. 
We can also access our patches by clicking here. And actually, maybe I'll just go ahead and choose a different one here, the full lead. We then have an area where we can transpose our key range. So this is going to basically change this bar down below, which is going to determine what keys are active on our external controller. So we could click and then manually input a value here. We could also, while that's highlighted, press a key on our external controller, and then that will map the key range area below as well. And we could also come down to the bottom and just simply drag this. And whatever area we, that we have this over, as far as our keyboard is concerned, these keys will then play back our device. Any, any keys that are not within this range will not produce any sound. We next then have our panning control, uh, our level fader, an area for adding inserts and sends. And then we can double click at the bottom and rename this instrument. We can also click this arrow to show in our console. Now we also have a few controls within our edit module here. So we can click this power button to power the instrument on and off. If we click this down arrow, then we can access the device and edit our parameters. Close that out. We can rename, disable, and remove. And so the whole purpose of using the multi-instrument is to work with two or more instruments uh, in tandem with each other and maybe layer or split their sounds over key ranges on our external controller. So let's go ahead and add another instrument. I'll come up to the instruments and I will add a presence. And you can see that we have another edit module which represents the presence. And our inspector area has updated to now show controls for working with our presence. And it's also behind the actual device, behind our multi-instrument. And I'll actually just close that out for the time being. And just know that if we want to access the controls for either of these instruments or any instrument that we have loaded or effects device, we can just select the edit module and then the inspector will update as well. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and close out the multi-instrument for a second and F3 to bring up the console. Just so you can see that here within the console, we only have one channel, which is going to represent our multi-instrument. But we do have this folder down at the bottom of the channel. And if we click that, we can see the individual channels for both of the instruments that we've loaded. We have our mojito here and then our presence. And then at the very top, these are automatically going to be routed to this multi-instrument bus here, as you can see. But we can also route that to our main output here. Or if we had another bus or effect send, we can route, change the routing up top here at any time. And we can hide those channels by clicking on the folder icon. I'll go ahead and close out the uh, console and click our edit instrument icon to open up our multi-instrument. And so now if I were to play back on my external controller, our key ranges are both mapped across here. So they this should play back in a layered manner. So let's see what we've got here. I'm not, I don't know what the patches are gonna sound like, so. They actually kind of go well together. Let me disable the mojito. So I'm gonna just power that off and let's listen to just the presence. Okay, well that's why they sounded good together, because we were only getting um, one sound from the mojito. So I will double click and we need to load a patch in here. I'll choose a pad. We'll close that out. And then now... Okay, normally I wouldn't adjust this fader here be above uh, 0 dB, but just for simplicity's sake, so we can keep moving. Now, let me reactivate the mojito.
Okay, so those are our two layered sounds now, or instruments rather. And as they're working now, we have them layered. But again, we can also split these up between different key ranges on our keyboard. So with the mojito selected, I will click in this first key range area and I will press a key on my external controller and set that there and set that one. Now I'll select the presence and set that to C3. And so now you can see that we have the split across our keyboard. So as I play the lower keys, we've got the mojito. Then we've got the presence, if I can play them both at the same time. Now within our multi-instrument, we can also add note effects here to add some extra depth or whatever we'd like to the instruments that we have loaded. And we can apply our effects to one instrument or a group of instruments that we have in here. So I'm going to go ahead and select the, I'll select the arpeggiator. It's probably not going to sound that great with these particular presets, but let's go ahead and give it a shot. I'm going to close that out. We can see that then by default that our arpeggiator is going to be at the very top of our chain here and it's going to be applied to both of our devices. So let me just go ahead and play back and see how this sounds. And then if I were to extend these ranges so that they're both going to be played back at the same time. Okay, so we can see how that works. And if we would like to apply any note effects or the arpeggiator here to one specific instrument, then we can just select that, click and drag up above our instrument, and then now it will only be applied to our presence. And if you notice here, our inspector is actually showing controls for the arpeggiator as it's selected. So we can quickly access some of the different parameters for that device as well. But of course, we can also click the down arrow here to uh, edit and open that up as well. Now, if you've noticed that, we also have this uh, titled splitter here. And with this, anytime that we're going to have more than two instruments, we can make use of this to basically give us more control over how our note effects are going to be applied to the instruments that are within our multi-instrument. So I'm going to come to the Add Instruments button and then bring in another mojito. I'm trying to bring in something that, that's light because I do have screen capture and I'm using a slower computer. So I want to be sure that this doesn't start crackling or popping. Um, so now we have three different instruments here and our arpeggiator is just affecting our presence. Now if we would like to have it affect all three of our instruments then we would simply drag it to the very top and then now it's going to affect all of our instruments. If we would just like to have it affect the second mojito then we would drag it to the top of that one like so and we can just continue to move this around to have it only affect which instruments that we would like. Now if we would like to have it affect two devices and not one, then we this is where we would bring in that splitter. And if I bring that here, and then we can, our signal is going to come to the splitter and then to these two devices. So then I can bring the arpeggiator just above our splitter. And then now our initial mojito that we first brought in will not be affected by our note effects arpeggiator but these other two that we brought in will be.
And so next we're going to take a look at the macro controls and I'm just for simplicity's sake going to remove the arpeggiator as well as the splitter and I'm going to take out this second mojito that I brought in. I'll go ahead and remove that. Now to assign different parameters to the macro controls area which we can access by clicking this icon here we can see that this basically is a representation of the various physical controls on my external controller. So I'm using an MPK Mini which has eight knobs and eight buttons. In actuality, there are eight um, drum pads, but they show up as button controls here on our macro controller. Then if I click this down arrow, then we can see we have these XY pads and I have a joystick on the MPK and so that's why these are available. Now we would want to click on this wrench icon here to access our area where we can actually map different parameters to our macro controls. And this is going to be useful so that if we have two or three or four instruments and say we'd like to adjust the filter cutoff on all three at the same time or both instruments at the same time, then we can assign both of those to one macro control so that we don't have to then go in and uh, we can and try to automate separately each instrument. We can just automate the one macro control and it's going to control the parameters for all of the instruments that we choose. So if I expand out this folder and come to the Mojito, expand that out, choose the filter, select that cutoff, and then I will add that as a target and we can see that that's populated in this field here. Let me close those up and then come to the presence. I will come to this filter as well, add that cutoff, and then add that as a target. So we now have the cutoff for both of these instruments mapped to this macro con control. And I'm going to right click on this and assign this to K1, which is knob 1 on the MPK Mini. I can then turn that knob and move the macro control. I'll come over here so we can see that that is active here as well. And we can actually assign, double click and assign our own name here. So if we've mapped, say, several different types of parameters to this, that's going to have a specific effect even beyond just adjusting the filter. We can input a name here that will help us remember uh, what we've done and assigned to it. So then if I come back to the matrix area here and then double click on the mojito and turn K1, we can see that the filter cutoff there is being moved. And something to keep in mind is that we do need to have the multi-instrument in focus in order for this to uh, be visible and see that activity. If I put the mojito in focus, then we have and turn the K1 on my uh, MPK MIDI, the cutoff is not adjusting because that MIDI information is being sent here. And then from here, it's being sent to the mojito. Now let me bring up the presence, so I'll double click. And let me make that filter active. Bring the multi-instrument to the front, adjust, and we can see that now let me pin that mojito and I'll pin this as well just so you can see here that as I turn K1 we are affecting the filter cutoff for both of these devices and so this is what I'm saying how this will help with automation that we may want to apply or um, assigning just um, multiple different parameters to the same macro control here and creating a certain type of effect that can go beyond just a basic filter cutoff adjustment. Now if we come back to our mapping area if we would like to adjust or remove different parameters that we've assigned, we can just simply highlight it, remove that target, and then in this way we can adjust what we actually have control of with our macro uh, control panel here. And so that is working with multi-instruments within Studio One 3, and I will see you in the next tutorial.